I don't know about you. I get a lot of robocalls and I'm, I'm freaking sick and tired of them. I've literally not been able to use my phone as a phone for a very long time. I have, I think Robo Killer is one of them. I have ATT Call Protect. I'm an old man here with this. Give me a moment. Call Control, I think is one of them. There's a bunch of them. I have a whole bunch of Robo Call handling things in my, on my phone. I pay like, I don't know, $40 a year for these things. Robocalls suck. This is a community supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. If you don't get robocalls, good for you. I guess I'll explain real quick what robocalls are in case you haven't gotten 13,000 of them. But the, the, at least the, the bad kind of robocalls that, that I get are often calls that have spoofed a number and it's often a number that shares the prefix of my phone number, so it, I'll, you know, I'll think it's a local number or something. And when you answer it, it goes really, really any one of a number of things. Either the IRS is looking for you, the FBI is looking for you, uh, they're offering some kind of vacation, or you've won a vacation. Um, healthcare is a big one. Uh, I, I got myself on a list sometime earlier this year and I got like 16,000 spam robocalls about how I can sign up for healthcare with any one of these 3,000 companies that are calling me with these robocalls. And I've just basically had to stop using my phone. Even my business line, I have had to start screening calls through Google Voice and having a caller say their name or something so that I can pick up when I know that it's been a screened call. So. It has basically made my phone and my business line almost completely unusable. Uh, the, the nice thing about that is that it has sort of pushed the business culture that was resisting moving away from phone calls. It has pushed them further towards emails because now at least I can send an email knowing that it's not going to be misinterpreted as a spam phone call and not go through. So. The 116th Congress has introduced and passed a, an act called the Stopping Bad Robocalls Act, not later than six months after the date of the enactment of this act, and as appropriate thereafter to ensure the consumer protection and privacy purposes of Section 227 of the Communication Act of 1934 remain effective. The commission shall prescribe such regulations or amend such existing regulations as necessary to clarify such descriptions of automatic telephone dialing systems and calls made using artificial or pre-recorded voice as will in the judgment of the commission ensure that the consumer protection and privacy purposes of such section are effectuated that calls made and text messages sent using automatic telephone dialing systems and calls made using an artificial or pre-recorded voice are made or sent, as the case may be, with consent unless exempted by paragraph 1, 2B, or 2C of subsection B of such section. I don't know what those sections are off the top of my head. We'll put them on the screen here, but it's probably for either pre-existing relationships like like your pharmacy can call you and have a robocall. And definitely politicians. Politicians always put an exception for themselves in these robocall rules. Scumbags. Consumers can withdraw consent for such calls and text messages. Circumvention or evasion is prevented. Callers maintain records to demonstrate uh, that they've obtained consent or otherwise complied with the act uh, and compliance with such section is facilitated. Uh, so Section 3, Consumer Protections, they're changing some of the, the wording of the consumer protection parts of Section 227 of the Communications Act of 1934. They're changing some of the language about how the, the parties are called and hung up, etc., and what qualifies and doesn't qualify. Enforcement. There's a four-year statute of limitation, so they can go after violations for four years after they occurred. It seems to be a three-year limit. Uh, for some things, etc. So this is what they're doing here isn't exactly fun because they're they're sort of editing a document by law. They're saying like, okay, so you got this section 227, remove this colon and change it to a semicolon and add a line, and that's literally what they're saying here. So this isn't exactly the most interesting thing. We can figure out, we can sort of divine what they're saying. There's going to be some kind of penalty in here someplace, I'm hoping. There is definitely a fine. It says it right there. 
and it appears to add effective call authentication technology, require providers of voice services within six months to implement technologies that effectuate call authentication technology, ensure that voice service providers have implemented effective authentication technology such that the provider has determined when originating calls on behalf of a calling party that the calling party number transmitted with such calls has been appropriately authenticated. So that's really interesting. They're putting a burden on the uh, U.S. telephone systems companies to implement call authentication technology, which would help the spoofing part of the robocalls. Uh, more reporting requirements. No additional costs, so the regulations shall prohibit providers from making any additional line item charges to consumers. So in other words, you're not going to get another line on your telephone bill that says, call authentication technology, $1.99 a month. Because you know they're scumbags and they'll do that too, right? And let's see, the evaluation in two years. The commission shall, regarding unauthenticated calls, help protect subscribers from receiving unwanted calls from a caller using an unauthenticated number through effective means of enabling the subscriber or provider to block such calls with no additional line item charge to the subscriber and take steps to ensure that the calls originating from a provider of service in an area that where the provider is exempt from the six-month time period are not wrongly blocked because calls are not able to be authenticated. So it's not going to happen immediately, and it might not even happen in the six-month time period. More reporting requirements. They define voice services. Uh, let's see. Stop robocalls. Not later than 18 months after the date of the enactment of this subsection, the commission shall, shall prescribe regulations to establish a process that streamlines the ways in which private entity may voluntarily share with the commission information relating to calls. Okay, so that's fine. Not later than one year, the commission shall take final agency action to ensure robocall blocking services provided on an opt-out basis per, uh, pursuant to the declaratory ruling of the commission adopted are provided with transparency with effective redress for both consumers and callers and are provided with no additional line item to consumers. So they're directing the agency to act. In the subsection, the term text message, okay, defining text message, voice over IP service, etc. Voice over IP services appear to be covered as long as they are an interconnected, interconnected voice over IP service as defined by Section 3 of the Communications Act of 1934, or would be, except that the service permits the users to terminate calls to the public switch telephone network, but does not permit the users to receive calls that originate on the public switch telephone network. So a one-way voice over IP is also covered. And that seems like it. So a little bit confusing there, but at least it seems like we've established that there is a limit to the kinds of verbal calls that can be made, that there will be some kind of penalty established, that there's a four-year statute of limitations, um, that there's a call authentication technology that needs to be implemented, and then verbal call blocking technology can be implemented. So uh, I, I, I support that because like I said, robocalls have effectively taken over my phone, and if I could figure out who they are, I would sue them individually myself, is how upset I am about it. One of the things that I wanted to bring up is that um, a lot of these scams um, focus on people who are older, who might have a little bit of um, diminished capacity. And so, like, I've seen people tweet... Um, Okay, I follow some police officers on, on Twitter and I've seen them say, you know, I wish that pharmacies and, and stuff like that would have signs over the gift card saying, you know, the IRS will never ask for for you to pay in gift cards, yeah. you know, and just um, helping to to prevent people from being scammed. And I think the more that we move towards you know, trying to keep people in their homes for as long as possible and just providing those supportive um, medical things that, th that they need. We also need to be, you know, cracking down on these scammers because pe people can lose so much. Yeah. Uh, this does not go into effect any time. It has only been approved by the House. It has not been approved by the Senate. But I think we, at the beginning 
uh, tax said something about it being there, there being a Senate bill that had similar provisions, and now the two need to be reconciled, and maybe that'll get approved. So call your senators, and I guess also call your House members and tell them that you want these bills to go through, uh, reconciled and, and go through. Uh, right now, like I said, the House bill is going to go to the Senate, but if there's already a competing or complementing bill in the Senate, sometimes they have to reconcile them, and then they'll have to reapprove them in both House and Senate again, the reconciled bill. So call your Congress people or write to them and let them know that you're sick and tired of robocalls. Uh, honestly, if you haven't written them about other things, maybe you should start writing them about other things first, and then also include this when you get to it. But I'll let you prioritize your own grievances. So that's our show, everyone. Thank you for joining me. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. In the studio with me here has been Kaylee, and in the virtual studio has been Tactical Bra. Uh, thank you to our monthly supporters on patreon.com slash ljfrench and sponsus.org slash law. Your financial support is what makes our channel possible. Thank you to Joshua Davis from Tandapay for his support at the $500 level in the month of July. And I even hear he's going to support in August as well. So thank you very, very much to Joshua Davis. Thank you to our $50 plus supporters, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Kyle Mudrock, Evie, Michael Pierce, Richard Fournier, Spirit Bear, Jan Gray, Daniel Perez, and Snorri Wazatsky. And thank you to the $5 plus supporters who are scrolling on the LED panel behind me. All of those people will be in the description of the videos below. However, it's only a dollar to get access to some of the behind the scenes stuff and our special supporter channel and all that, and our half hour live streams on Sunday mornings. And we are planning on adding more live streams for the patrons probably a friday live stream we'll see like a question and answer kind of thing and then we'll produce that video into a youtube video but if you want to be on the uh question and answer live stream you'll have to be at least a dollar supporter so i'll leave some room here for dog video thank you very much love you all i'm leonard french your favorite copyright attorney have a great week bye